This is Dr. Gilbert Buford's answering service. How may I help you? No, ma'am, I cannot. Is this an emergency? Need some consoling, huh? Well, tell you what. It's against the rules to give you his phone number, but I can tell you that now that he's all but retired, Dr. Buford spends most of his evenings at his favorite gumbo stand down in the French Quarter. If you really need to talk to him, you can probably find him there. It's at the corner of Rampart and Domain. I did indeed. Granny Pumpkin's Cajun Cooking. They make some darn fine gumbo. You're welcome, and uh, I'm truly sorry about your loss. That mutual friend of yours and Dr. Buford's? I need to put something else here. What should I put here? <gasps> Hi, this is Bess. I'm a little busy right now, but leave your name and number, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can, okay? Coming! I'm still looking for it! I hear ya! Just a sec! Be right there! Hang on! Cute dog. Um, Lamont, could you help me? A bowl of gumbo, please. Uh-oh. I better get out of here. There, that should do it. I need to go through that box for Nancy, then get the nose spray for Lamont. Whoa, this is weird. I better call Nancy and read this to her word for word. I can't leave yet. I still have to see if the name of Bruno's dog is on that old photo. That was yummy. Mm-mm. Tasty. Woo! That was hot. Talk about spicy. Hot, but yummy. Can I get a gumbo to go, please? Did that. I can check that off. Done. Haven't done that yet. I still need to do that. Can't check that off yet. Aw, cute. Well, I've got the right idea. That doesn't quite cut it. Close, but no cigar. Still need some work. I'm getting there, I think. <laughs> Ooh, they weren't kidding. <laughs> Ew, P.U. This might come in handy. This should work perfectly. Password? Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, shuttle boat. Scupper bowl. Scuttled boat. Scuttled bones. Scupper bloke. Um, I can't quite reach that bottle up there. Could you get it for me? I know that voice. Let go. You're making a big mistake. Let go of me. Look, I'm not here to make trouble. You're making a, a big deal out of nothing. Can't we just talk about this? Where are you taking me? If you just let me explain. <laughs> are you Dr. Gilbert Buford? <laughs> My name's Bess Marvin. Your answering service said I'd probably find you here. Do you mind if I join you? I'm looking for Dr. Gilbert Buford. Is it true that Dr. Bollet was your best friend? Is there any doubt in your mind as to how Dr. Bollet died? His idiosyncrasies didn't bother you? How exactly did he die? I thought Bruno Bollet was your best friend. He was hard to get along with. Did they do an autopsy on Dr. Bollet? I hear that you're a member of the Jolly Rogers crew. Is that true? <laughs> Be that as it may, just what is a crew? Was Bruno Bollet a Jolly Roger too? Are you saying the Jolly Rogers do still exist? <laughs> My name's Bess Marvin. I'd like to ask you some questions about Bruno Bollet, if that's okay. <laughs> I'd like to ask you some questions about Bruno Bollet, if that's okay. Did Dr. Bollet ever say anything to you about owning a crystal skull? What the skull look like? Do you have any idea where he kept it? This friend of mine who is also a friend of Henry Bollet, you know, Dr. Bollet's great nephew. Anyway, while she was visiting Henry, she saw this book in Bruno's library about the legendary crystal skulls and was kind of intrigued and thought that since Henry said that you were pretty much Bruno's only friend, maybe Bruno had said something to you about it, and as it turns out, he had. That's all I know. Where was Dr. Bollet when he had his... Am I? Dr. Bollet's housekeeper says you just happened to walk in just as he was having his heart attack. Is that true? Was Dr. Bollet unconscious the whole time? Why would he have a heart attack in the foyer? Can you remember anything that might indicate what he was doing by the front door? I mean, had he just come in from a walk? Was he wearing a hat? Was he holding anything? Had he dropped something? An umbrella? Sunglasses? Do you know what happened to it? Do you remember anything else? Are you saying an iguana made off with the letter Bruno had been reading? Did you see Iggy while you were tending to Bruno that day? Do you think it's possible that Renee caused Dr. Bollet's death by, say, hoarding the pills from those missing prescriptions and giving them to him all at once? You mean hoodoo really works? You're not serious. Thanks for your time. I'll let you get back to your gumbo. Guess I'll be running along. I've bugged you enough. I don't know, I just did.
The police and the fire department came in Lamont. Boy, was he mad. I'm not allowed to set foot in his store ever again. I told you I wasn't good at sneaky stuff. This one fireman was kind of cute, though. He gets off duty soon. He might have a brother. Or maybe not. I like everything. Not really. Curios aren't my thing. Actually, I do have a question. Um, this friend of mine found the number of a receipt that came from this shop, and she asked me to ask you what the receipt is for. But if you're really busy, or you'd rather not, or it's against the rules, uh, 21-3872. Is something wrong? Assorted unknown items? Where's the box now? Can you tell me what was in the box? Is Henry Boulay a friend of yours? Was Bruno a friend of yours? Did Bruno have a lot of valuable things? That gumbo stand outside? What do you think? Is it pretty authentic? What's up with all those bottles of weird stuff over there? Does it work? I'd probably poison myself. In all your journeys through the wonderful world of junk, have you ever come across one of those legendary crystal skulls? You have so many other oddities in here, I was just wondering. You mean you have? Really? Hey, maybe we got some kind of psychic thing going here. Quick, think of a number between 1 and 10 and I'll try to guess it. You thinking of a number? Okay, uh, 4. Darn. Guess it was just a coincidence. Seeing as this place is called Zeke's, and it's your place, shouldn't your name be Zeke? There's a man sitting at the gumbo stand outside named Gilbert Buford. Do you know him? You know, I still feel guilty about that sneezing thing, so how about I go and get you a nice big bowl of gumbo? You know, I still feel guilty about that sneezing thing, so great. I'll be right back. Oops, I'll be right back. There you go. Enjoy. There you go. You still look kind of hungry to me. I think I'll look around some more. I'm going to keep browsing if that's okay. Maybe I'll have another look around in here. Guess I'll check this place out some more. Hello? Uh, why? Hello? Hey, Nance. I just got back from shopping, which I am happy to report is fantastic here. So, what's going on with you? Great. I just took a nice, luxurious bubble bath, and I'm ready to boogie. When are you coming back here? Hello? So what's been happening? Tell me everything. What's going on? That's funny. Nothing much. A lot is in a whole bunch of fun stuff. You were knocked out by a skeleton wearing a red ascot? You think it was a burglar? I know that tone of voice. You're not leaving there until you've done just that, are you? What's it a receipt for? Zeke's? You gotta be kidding me. I mean, I'm sitting here on our balcony in the French Quarter looking down at a place across the street called Zeke's. No way. You... You want me to snoop? Beth. I'm not good at that sneaking around stuff, Nancy. I get nervous, my tongue gets all knotted up, my palms sweat to say nothing of my armpits. Beth. Uh-uh, forget it. Not gonna do it. Maybe not for you. Beth. Mmm, this is not gonna end well, I just know it. And if I go to jail, you're baking me cookies every day. Chocolate, chocolate chip, got that? Okay, I'll call you as soon as it's over. Uh, no, not yet. Okay, talk to you later. That's the bad news. The box is in a back room, and it contains assorted unknown items, and that's all Lamont would tell me. Said something about not wanting to get anyone in trouble. So, looks like that's that. He's not going to let me do that. Oh, no. I'm not going to snoop, Nancy Drew. I told you I'm a lousy snooper. Could be? I'm supposed to risk life, limb, and liberty for something that could be important? You owe me, Nancy Drew. Oh, do you owe me. Save it for my parole hearing. Just wanted to make sure you hadn't changed your mind. Oh, I was hoping you'd say that. Nope, that's all right. I'll think of something. Okay, which ends with Lamont getting a face full of something that'll keep him out of commission long enough for me to go through that box. You're nuts. I can't pull something like that off. Sometimes being your friend is so not fun. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Let's hope so. I'll call you in a bit. Will do. Okay, I found a really old photo of a boy and a dog. And there was a photo of an iguana dressed up like a pirate. You heard me. And there's a costume in the box of a skeleton man. Thought you'd like that. There's also a box that's locked by some kind of letter combination and that has two pieces of paper stuck to it. On the first piece is a bunch of goofy stuff written by someone named Amelinda. And on the second is a bunch of numerical references to passages from Hamlet. 
some of which don't even exist according to a note that I think Lamont made. No, I have no idea how. I'm not going to open the box. Because of me, Lamont's out there having a sneezing conniption. I need to get him some nose spray before he breaks some part of his body I didn't even know he had. Oh, all right. No, that's okay. I'll try to figure it out on my own. If you've got any suggestions, I sure wouldn't mind hearing them. Roger. Over and out. Yeah, to passages from Hamlet. And if the second number's five, I count five letters from there and write it down. Okay, I can do this. I won't call you again until after I've opened it. Well, the box is in the back room, and it contains assorted unknown items, and that's all Lamont would tell me. Said something about not wanting to get anyone in trouble. But you'll be happy to know that I am in the process of sneaking into the back room so I can hopefully look through the box. Will do. Well, the box is in the back room, and it contains assorted unknown items, and that's all Lamont would tell me. Said something about not wanting to get anyone in trouble. But you'll be happy to know that I have snuck into said back room. I don't know yet. Right. Well, the box is in the back room, and it contains assorted unknown items, and that's all Lamont would tell me. Said something about not wanting to get anyone in trouble. But you'll be happy to know that I have snuck into said back room and can tell you exactly what's in the box. No, I'll tell you what's weird. The box the letter is in is padded, and it has this round indentation in it that's the exact size of a human skull. It's like it used to contain a skull, but now it doesn't. Yeah, inside the box that this box is in, there's a couple of photographs. One's of a boy and a dog, and the other is of an iguana dressed up like a pirate. And there's a costume in the box of a skeleton man. And did I mention that Lamont was very reluctant to talk about buying this box of stuff from Henry? Said he didn't want to get anyone in trouble, whatever that means. Thought you'd like that. Would you believe it? The guy is still sneezing. He must keep nose spray around because something's wrong with his sinuses. Oh, he's going to hate me. Yeah, that's exactly what it looked like. Why? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think it said Bruno. No, it, it said Bruno and, but whatever came after and was hidden by the frame. Oh, no. No, you don't. No more snooping. Uh-uh. How? I can't just go waltzing into Lamont's back room. And he's for sure as heck not going to fall for that sneeze contraption again. Absolutely, unequivocally, for the last time, no. Okay. Ah, who am I kidding? We're not going to have any fun here until you solve this mystery, and since you can't do that until I do this... We're not going to have any fun here until you solve this mystery, and since you can't do that until I do this... Okay, I'll sneak into the back room and take another look at that photo. Hi, Nance. It's me. Bess here. Oops. Looks like Dr. Buford decided he's had enough gumbo. Nope. But here's what else I've learned since I talked to you last. Hi, Nan. I'm sorry, but when it comes to getting into, or should I say, breaking into the curio shop, I'm just not sure what I should do first. Good idea. Bye. Okay, I found a back door into the curio shop, but it's locked. I guess so. I still haven't figured out what buttons will open the lock that's on the back door to the curio shop. No, let me give it another shot. I unlock the back door to the curio shop. Gotcha. Not yet. I'm wearing it. Actually, it's more like I'm swimming in it. Right. Not yet. I'm nervous. Uh, I choked when it came to the password. Oh yeah, thanks. Password again? Thank you. Good news and bad news, Nance. I found out that the receipt is for a box of stuff that Lamont, that's the guy who owns Zeke's, bought from Henry Bollet. I found out that receipt is for a box of stuff that Lamont, that's the guy who owns Zeke's, bought from Henry Bollet. It's me. Not yet, but I'm working on it. No. Mostly because I have no idea how to distract Lamont so I can get into the back room. Me again? Nope. Still working on it. Yeah, when it comes to waylaying Lamont, I could use some suggestions. It's me. I'm in the back room of the curio shop. Uh, no, not yet. I'll call you after I do. Okay, I found the box of stuff. Okay, I found the box of stuff. Good question. I'll go through it, then call you. Bye. I'm not sure yet. I... Maybe I'll call you back. Bye. I can tell you it's in the box of stuff Henry Bollet sold to the curio shop. Ready? It's me. Still haven't unlocked that box. No, thanks. Just checking in. In a word, yeah. Hi, Nance. Okay, here's what's been happening at my end. It's me. Just thought I'd call and get you up to speed. Hi, Nancy. Uh, what's up? Just relaxing out here on the veranda. Are you done there? Well, get a move on, or I might have to go shopping again. That's what I was going to ask you. Bye. And I'm still out here at my wit's end. Okay. Ditto. Bye. I mean, I will if I don't screw up. You bet I am. In fact, I'm not going to call you again until I have seen that picture. 
I'm going in. That's what it said on the photo. Kind of a weird name for a dog, huh? I'll tell you, being sneaky takes a lot out of me. I'm exhausted. Story of my life. Call me if you need me. Interesting stuff. You just want me to talk to him? That's it? Nothing nefarious? No black ops stuff? What do you mean by weird? Murdered? By whom? Including this Gilbert Buford guy? Great, I'm going to be chatting up Jack the Ripper. Well, I can see the gumbo stand from our balcony. If he's the guy that's sitting down there, I guess he looks harmless. Okay, I'll go talk to him. Cheerio! And that's pretty much it. Good luck! Bye! You know, I feel like stretching my legs. Maybe I'll go and see if Dr. Buford has anything more to say. Call you back. Bye. And that's all she wrote. Stay in touch. See ya. What? Mm. No. Oh, all right. Absolutely, unequivocally, irrefutably, incontrovertibly, no. Which, of course, actually means yes, because if I don't do this, I'll be stuck here by myself until you give up. And since we both know you will never give up, I don't suppose it would do any good to point out that the curio shop is closed. I don't suppose it would do any good to point out that the curio shop is closed. Okay, I'll give it a shot. It's a keypad, but I have no idea how many numbers I need to enter, let alone what numbers and in what order. No, darn it. I'm going to try to figure it out on my own. Yes, please. I will. Bye. Of course. You're a genius. Thanks. And he did. He told me everything, Nancy. I bluffed him into confessing. You would have been so proud of me. Oh, and before I forget, the name they chanted at the start of the meeting was Jean Lafitte. Okay. First off, he said that with his dying breath, Bruno Bollet directed him to steal the painting of Henry's parents and lock it up in Henry's parents' crypt. Bruno seemed to think that way, Henry would wind up with the crystal skull instead of somebody else. So Dr. Buford dressed up in his skeleton man costume, stole the canvas, and hid it in the crypt like Bruno asked. But then, Dr. Buford had second thoughts and decided to heck with Henry. He wanted that crystal skull for himself. So this afternoon, he dressed up in his skeleton man costume again and snuck into Henry's house so he could get the key from that mini cemetery and retrieve the painting he'd left in that crypt knowing the painting would somehow lead him to the skull. Right. And now that we're on to him, he says he no longer wants the skull. He's embarrassed that he allowed his superstitious side to get the best of him and says whoever finds the skull is welcome to it. I told him you were looking for the skull. At least that's what Dr. Buford said. Uh-oh. Actually, I told him you were on the verge of finding it. I don't know. I got carried away. So if he lied to me and he really does still want the skull, then he might come after you. He left right after we talked, and I don't think he went back into that meeting. What if he's on his way over there? We have to go home? Why? We have to cut our weekend short on account of wasps? I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but Nancy, you really need to be more careful. Get lost. What's the password? Forget it. Better hurry. We're just about to start. Oh, and I should probably warn you. This storm keeps up. You might have a problem getting a cab to take you back downtown. Y'all take care. John Lafitte, John Lafitte, John Lafitte, John Lafitte, John Lafitte. Renee burst into tears and sobbed as Bernie swam away with a crystal skull. It made me feel sorry for her for about two seconds. After all, while she may not have meant to cause Bruno's death, she certainly meant to cause mine when she left me sealed up in that crypt. It felt good to turn her over to the police. Later that night, Dr. Buford came over and apologized for knocking me out with that smoke bomb and for allowing himself to think, even for a moment, that Bruno's crystal skull was anything more than a pretty piece of quartz. To make up for his shameful behavior, he insisted on taking Bess and me on a grand tour of New Orleans. Seeing the city through the eyes of someone who loves it as much as Dr. Buford was truly special. He invited Henry, too, but Henry declined. He was still trying to process the fact that his great uncle wanted him to have the skull. Henry always thought that to Bruno, he was nothing more than an annoying family obligation, someone Bruno couldn't care less about. Yet Bruno's request of Dr. Buford, made with his dying breath, proved that he did care about Henry. Apparently, and unfortunately for Henry, Bruno was the type of man who just couldn't bring himself to say such things out loud. As for Lamont, when he heard what happened, he closed his shop, bought enough marshmallows to fill a swamp boat, and has been scouring the bayous ever since, kicking every log he comes to in hopes of finding Bernie and the crystal skull inside him.
But Bernie has yet to turn up. Maybe the skull didn't agree with him. Maybe swallowing it caused him to stop associating the sound of a kicked log with yummy sweet things. In any case, the whisperer has disappeared, lost to the world once again, which is totally fine by me. Renee burst into tears and sobbed as Bernie swam away with a crystal skull. It made me feel sorry for her for about two seconds. After all, while she may not have meant to cause Bruno's death, she certainly meant to cause mine when she left me sealed up in that crypt. It felt good to turn her over to the police. Later that night, Dr. Buford came over and apologized for knocking me out with that smoke bomb and for allowing himself to think, even for a moment, that Bruno's crystal skull was anything more than a pretty piece of quartz. To make up for his shameful behavior, he insisted on taking Bess and me on a grand tour of New Orleans. Seeing the city through the eyes of someone who loves it as much as Dr. Buford was truly special. He invited Henry, too, but Henry declined. He was still trying to process the fact that his great uncle wanted him to have the skull. Henry always thought that to Bruno he was nothing more than an annoying family obligation, someone Bruno couldn't care less about. Yet Bruno's request of Dr. Buford, made with his dying breath, proved that he did care about Henry. Apparently, and unfortunately for Henry, Bruno was the type of man who just couldn't bring himself to say such things out loud. As for Lamont, when he heard what happened, he closed his shop, bought enough marshmallows to fill a swamp boat, and has been scouring the bayous ever since, kicking every log he comes to in hopes of finding Bernie and the crystal skull inside him. But Bernie has yet to turn up. Maybe the skull didn't agree with him. Maybe swallowing it caused him to stop associating the sound of a kicked log with yummy sweet things. In any case, the whisperer has disappeared, lost to the world once again, which is totally fine by me.